people are involved. Of course. White people will never join black people to advance black interest. It doesn't happen, will never happen. That's why we've never been compensated for slavery, colonialism. That's why South Africa never got reparations after this crime against humanity that is acknowledged by everybody of apartheid. Yet the Jews were given 140 billion ever since the Second World War, just for five years of oppression. So that goes to show you that white people will stand with white people. The only dumb creature on earth that will stand with animals that are not related to it in order to subjugate their own people are black people. And they don't learn from history. But they don't learn from history because when our chiefs sold fellow Africans into slavery, they mm. thought that they were benefiting until the European realized how stupid we are and colonized us on our own continent and colonized those chiefs as well who lost everything that they had made during this period. Bole Secha don't understand that they can build as much money as possible, paper money, but at the end of the day, when whites want to take what they want to take here, they will come with jets and bombs like they did in Libya, like they did in Iraq. They'll take everything, including what Bole Secha have. And on that day, they'll be like everybody else. Which is why it makes sense for them to be fighting to build a commonwealth for black people that will be able to help us to industrialize and create our own weapons to defend ourselves if indeed that day comes. But they're not thinking like that. This issue that we're talking about with Fatah, it happened in Zimbabwe. The Financial Action Task Force greylisted Zimbabwe two years ago. And last year, they intended to blacklist the Zimbabwean financial system. I wrote an article where I was saying to the Zimbabwean people, they are going to be blacklisted by the Financial Action Task Force because they want to remove the illegal sanctions, which they are seeing building a lot of pressure is building against them on these illegal sanctions. So they want to remove the sanctions and then utilize a blacklisting by the Financial Action Task Force to actually cripple the Zimbabwean financial system by removing it from the international banking system. Mm. So the um, um, a Minister of uh, Justice saw that article and he got in touch with me. He asked us to have Minister a call. Minister of Justice in Zimbabwe. In Zimbabwe. He said, let's have a call. We had a call for about an hour or two. Mm. We had a conversation. He says, explain to me, what is this grey listing? Why is it happening? How does it turn into blacklisting? And what does it do for Zimbabwe? And what are the solutions? We talked. He was surprised by what I was saying. And I told him that you and your bankers, your reserve bankers, your bankers in Zimbabwe have acceded to these rules made by the same people who've got sanctions on you, who are now trying to use their own laws as international law to blacklist your financial system. And what you need to do is you need to make sure that the UN comes into Zimbabwe to actually measure the current existing economic war that has blocked legitimate channels of financing and international funding and international trade and has forced you other alternatives that are then considered by the same people who put sanctions on you as money laundering and means of financing terrorism. He was like, wow. Like when the UN proclaims the illegality of the current financial war that you're under of sanctions, they will then make a clear lighting of the illegality of people trying to then blacklist you for using alternative channels when they've closed the legitimate channels. The Zimbabwean government went and implemented some of what was what the finance minister said I must write in my proposal for him as to the solutions to the problem. They used that and they were removed from the gray list. And today Zimbabwe is not on a gray list. Yet South Africa is on a gray list when it is less conforming I and mean, it is better conforming to the FATF or the Financial Action Task Force uh, 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 recommendations than Zimbabwe. Tell me why. And South Africa is the only African country that is a member of the 39 nations that are members of the Financial Action Task Force. And there's only one reason why that happens, because your banking system is white-owned. The Reserve Bank of South Africa is privately owned. This banking system is still a Western banking system, a British, American, French, and G8 banking system that they can utilize to impose their rules on the rest of Africa.
Now, many people might say, but it's probably the most competent banking system on Africa. It's not true. South Africa has got one of the highest poverty rates on the African continent, highest inequality on the African continent. South Africans rose up against the apartheid government because of incompetence and the inability of that government to give 90% of the people anything including housing, toilets. So that's a failed banking system. Yet it is the richest country on earth, which has given over 12 trillion US dollars of wealth to the country. How didn't it manage such a lot of wealth and make sure that every South African is living comfortably? How can Dubai be richer than South Africa when it has given less resources to the world than South Africa? Because of an incompetent banking system that is a thieving banking system that relies on creating rules like FRATF, like the Financial Action Task Force regulations to continue the pillaging of South Africa for the purpose of serving the masters that have made South African incorporation or a private entity.